veggie burger that is a little bit more substantial than a typical burger that could kind of like stand alone as a, a meat alternative just as it is. Well, today I'm going to show you the recipe that I use for chickpea cutlets. There's certainly many of them out there. Um, and I've actually kind of adapted this one as I've used it for probably a good 10 years now. Um, so, you know, I would start with one and then whatever your taste buds sort of say. For example, my husband doesn't really like a ton of garlic, so I use like one clove of garlic. You might want to use like 10, you know, totally up to you. Um, but with these chickpea cutlets, it's really great because then you just pan fry them um, once you mix all the batter up for a few minutes in the, the pan and they work really great with any kind of like a starch like a mashed potato or rice um, and then like any kind of vegetable if you want like a standard meal um, especially this is great if you're used to cooking for someone who is used to like the meat starch vegetable situation sometimes plant-based proteins don't always lend themselves as well to that type of uh, meal particularly like with beans and whatnot so i really like the chickpea cutlets just like a standalone meat alternative um, but I also really like it in sandwiches so you once you make the burger patties you know you'll have leftovers and I will say do not heat them up in the microwave because the vital wheat gluten that is in there will get um, extra rubbery and sort of uh, just rubbery which is like not pleasant so always be sure to heat them back up the leftovers in a toaster oven or in a saute pan for best results so sandwiches work really great, um, load them up with all your favorite toppings. I also then like to cut the patties up into cubes and add them into maybe like a stir fry or um, like if I made like a, like a, any kind of pasta or like, uh, like a barley risotto situation um, or any kind of like rice peel off where I just want to like top it with some, some protein, I'll cut them up into pieces and use it that way. So. I really hope that you find this chickpea cutlet recipe helpful. I know that it is a staple um, in our house. And the cool thing too is that there's a secret ingredient, aka nutritional yeast. So you're gonna get that savory flavor, but you're also gonna then increase um, the vitamin B12 in, in your diet, which is always a plus if you ask me. Um, but then it's made with the, the chickpeas and the vital wheat gluten, which is of course the protein found in gluten, very, very high in protein. Um, a serving, which is like a quarter cup, has like 23 grams of protein, which is a lot of protein. So definitely uh, lots of benefit there. And more than anything, they just taste freaking good. So check it out, like the video if you found that helpful, and comment to let me know what you think of it if you make it. I'd love to hear. And stick around at the end for a final picture. Uh, and definitely watch for all the good details in the video. I will see you soon. Keep it kind. So let's go ahead and dive in. In the top left there, you'll see that I have some sautéed onions and mushrooms. We'll get to those later. First, you're going to add a can of garbanzo beans. I use the reduced sodium, but you can use whatever you feel best with. After you've drained it, you're going to add the entire can into your bowl. Now, this next process takes a little bit because with the large fork, or if you have a potato masher, you can use that too, but you're going to go through and mash the garbanzo beans. Now, remember that you're not really making hummus here, so you don't eat them like super thin um, and creamy. You can have, leave some chunks. So you'll see that I have some chunks, but then I also um, have sort of this like nice thick consistency that'll be the base of our burger. Once you've gotten that, we're going to add our sautéed mushrooms and onion. I used half an onion and a handful of mushrooms. This is just to kind of add depth of flavor. If you don't want to use those, you certainly don't have to. Um, they just provide a little bit of moisture as well. Vital wheat gluten is sort of the, the sticky um, glue that holds everything together. You use a cup of that. And you, once you start kind of mixing everything together um, with your, you're going to add one cup of the vital wheat gluten and one cup of vegetable broth. With that liquid, you'll start to see that once you start stirring, the vital wheat gluten gets a little bit stretchy. Um, and that's what we're looking for. That's going to provide that, uh, that little bit of that stretch in the burger. You'll also add a quarter cup of soy sauce. And that has that umami flavor, um, but it also adds a little bit of liquid to kind of help mix everything together so it sticks nice and evenly. Now go ahead and stir, stir, stir is basically the name of the game here until again you start to see that stringiness of the vital wheat gluten. From there, add about a quarter cup of the nutritional yeast. This is going to add just a savory flavor. It's not going to taste cheesy by any means. And I also just think it's a nice way to get in some extra B vitamins. 
From there, add about a tablespoon or two of olive oil. Depending on how wet your mixture is, you may need a little more or less. Because I used the onion and mushroom, I didn't need to add as much olive oil. And then you'll see that your mixture is pretty wet. So by adding about a half a cup um, initially of the panko breadcrumbs, that'll help kind of make everything thicker. You will need additional panko breadcrumbs when you go to pan fry a couple minutes on each side. Once you've pan fried a couple minutes on each side, you are good to go and you have a dinner that is ready to be served with whatever your little heart desires. Enjoy!